Neil. Beg your pardon. You must be Hella. And Thor, son of Odin. Really? You don't look like him. Perhaps we can come to an arrangement. You sound like him. Neil. Before your queen. Hey everybody, this is going to be my non-spoilery Thor Ragnarok review. They're letting us post it early because they're pretty confident that people are going to love this movie. And no surprise, you've probably been hearing about how they sort of re-engineered the Thor formula for the Marvel Universe. Chris Hemsworth had been getting tired of playing the character. Anthony Hopkins actually thought that his character died after the last movie. He's like, he's dead, he's not coming back. That's the end of it. Like, he didn't want to come back to the Thor movies either. So they had to find something new and fresh to do. So if you understand the Norse concept of Ragnarok, that's what they went to. And I think it was the perfect idea. And they got this crazy weird director, Taika Waititi, from down in New Zealand, who made this amazing, unabashed love letter to Jack Kirby with Kevin Feige. So if you're a big fan of the comics, especially the Kirby era comics, this is 100% going to be your favorite Thor film and probably one of the best Marvel movies so far. And I will rank this with my other favorite Marvel movies at the end of the video too. But there is a Thor ticket giveaway going on right now. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber, leave a comment on this video. So just based on the way they marketed it and based on some of the comic book stuff that I've read in the past, I had some pretty clear expectations going into the film, especially given what's happening in real life with all the actors. Like, okay, people are coming to the ends of their contracts, so they have to make room in case actors don't want to come back. We're at that point in Marvel Phase 3. You've probably seen how other big movies recently, like Spider-Man Homecoming, are part of Phase 3, so they work as part of this overstory building up to Infinity War, but they also wind up feeling more self-contained than Phase 1, Phase 2 movies. So Ragnarok manages to bring the grandeur that you would expect from a Thor movie. He is a god in the Marvel Universe, an actual god, and they find an interesting way of dealing with that on a story level. But they also found a lot of funny ways to take the piss out of the more ridiculous elements of Thor stories. Like you go back and you watch that first Thor film, it feels pretty stiff. They played it pretty straight up like Shakespeare in space. Like they took it really seriously. So we're at the point now where there have been so many Marvel movies that they can have a little bit of fun taking the piss out of themselves. You swear to cast aside all selfish ambition and to pledge yourself only to the good of the realm. You're in my seat. I would love for someone else to rule, but it can't be you. You're just the worst. But without getting into spoilers, they did do a really good job of leading up to Infinity War and teasing some really big concepts and some ideas and showing you just how badass these characters can be because Hulk, Thor, even Hela are so powerful that it's just really hard to show you that when they're with the other Earth-based characters in the movies. So no surprise that Chris Hemsworth was awesome. The thing that's really changed for him while he's been playing this character is that people found out that he's actually a legit funny person. They actually let Chris Hemsworth be more Chris Hemsworth in this movie. Like they let him go full Hemsworth, they went full Goldblum, full Kirby. So that all just gets back to the idea of them doing a story as big as Ragnarok, which is why I think that it works. So all the actors' performances were amazing. I mean, they got Kate freaking Blanchett. She's probably the best Marvel villain since Loki. And Tom Hiddleston, too, is one of those characters who's like, you know, will he keep coming back to the Marvel Universe? But he's also kind of getting tired of playing that same old character. So they just let the actors have a little bit more fun, especially people like Odin. And then you have people like Benedict Cumberbatch playing Doctor Strange albeit for a small portion in the film. So I know you're all wondering about Mark Ruffalo, what's going on with his Hulk. He does a really good job of unleashing a world breaker Hulk like you've never seen. You've seen him be the Hulk before, but you've never seen him be a chatty Hulk. You've never really seen anything but the mopey version of Banner. So Banner having more fun and being more in tune with himself and the big green guy is just a lot more fun. A lot of the things that I thought about the Hela character coming into the movie ended up being true, so I'm actually really excited because I had some big expectations for her. And there are a lot of things that we can't talk about till we get to spoilers, but I'm just so excited for what she's going to do next. But Tessa Thompson's Valkyrie ends up being a much better female companion to Thor than the previous females that were around him in the other Thor movies. 
no knock on Natalie Portman or Sif. They serve their roles appropriately, but I feel like those characters which weren't written to be quite as fun as somebody like Valkyrie. So there's this really amazing thing that happens with the women in the movie. Like, they're all totally badass, but you are at both times scared and attracted to them. Obviously, Hela is off the charts. Valkyrie is a function of that, too. Can't say enough about Taika playing Korg. He steals every scene that he's in. He's a bigger part of the movie than I expected, but he's still a relatively minor character. He's playing this crazy gladiator, war-bound Hulk character from the comics with a Maori accent that's so soft-spoken that if you're not prepared for it is a bit of a surprise, but he actually said that he's parodying a lot of the big bouncers back in New Zealand, back in his hometown. He said they're the most soft-spoken, nice terrifying people that he's ever met the most massive dudes that will just rip your arms out of their sockets and speak incredibly softly while they're doing it but if there was anything that i was worried about going into the film it was jeff goldblum going full goldblum i just didn't know how that would work in a marvel movie even though there are a lot of ridiculous things in marvel movies so you're kind of prepared for that but when you see somebody like jeff goldblum who's known for being ridiculous in that way you just don't know what you're going to get and he actually ended up being pretty good as one of the elders of the universe but we're not really talking about independence day to jeff goldblum we're talking more about jurassic park jeff goldblum he can turn in some amazing performances if given the right material and they actually wound up letting him improvise a lot of his lines and even though the movie had a pretty good script, they actually wound up letting a lot of the actors improvise scenes when it was appropriate. So I feel like more of the comedy elements end up being improvised than the mythology elements. Those tend to be a little more written out because they're a little more dense. Like they have to explain some really big concepts and explain some big aspects of the characters, but they let them try a bunch of different things with the jokes. And I feel like that ended up working. So controlled improvisation. Anthony Hopkins is always amazing. You watch him in shows like Westworld. You watch his classic films. It's been a long time since I've seen him turn in a bad performance. So they did have a lot of fun making the movie. You've probably seen some of the behind the scenes featurettes. But generally, there were really only a couple things that disappointed me. And that was mostly because of my expectations and the lead up to Infinity War happening. So we can talk more about some of the specific things when we get to spoilers. Because I think coming out of this, the most interesting conversations that people will have are super spoilery. So we'll just have to wait a little while to do that till everybody gets a chance to see it. But once you do get a chance to see it, let me know in the comments what you thought of it compared to the other Thor movies and then compared to the other Marvel movies in general. Because after this, I still feel like Winter Soldier is a better movie, but this is for sure 100% the best Thor movie to date. And they do a good way of setting up a new Thor franchise if the actors all want to come back. But it also works as a bookend for the characters in case they don't, which is a weird thing that they do with the Marvel trilogies. They had to do the same thing with Iron Man 3. If Robert Downey Jr. hadn't have gone back and renewed his contract through the Avengers films after Iron Man 3, that would have been the last time you would have seen the character. So this movie does the same thing for the Thor characters, including Thor himself. But I do think that because of the way things went while they were filming it, how the actors feel about it and the way they're talking about it, that they will come back. Not everybody, but I do think that Thor will be around for a long time in the Marvel Universe. So on my list of favorite Marvel movies, you know, favorite Phase 3 movies, I'm still expecting Infinity War to probably be my favorite. And I think that Black Panther, just because it's so fresh and new, will be better received. It'll be a slightly better film overall. But I guess that would make this my number four favorite Marvel movie, considering those movies that have not come yet will probably rank a little bit higher in my top five list. But that's another good question. Let me know what is your favorite Marvel movie so far in the comments below. And I'll say congratulations to the latest giveaway winner, Steve Hefferman. Please private message me so I can get your contact details. There was a Punisher trailer that just dropped, so I'll do a video for that next. We got some Arrow tonight. But you can click here to re-watch Black Panther while you wait for that. And you can click here to watch Arrow name drop Batman. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.